good evening my friend uh, good evening my dear teachers uh, and uh, dear students so uh, the topic for today is uh, flexible urethroscopy or in other words it is called as rars and uh, rars and urethroscopy uh, as the name says uh, rars stands for retrograde intraarenal surgery so it makes use of a, a flexible scope uh, and replaces the semi rigid scope that is normally used in urs so i would i'm dr mrinal pawa i'm working as a urologist in bangalore hospital and i welcome you all on behalf of conceptual surgery so uh, i'll be starting my talk with a brief uh, overview of uh, urs and then take it forward to uh, rars because rars in a basic essence is the next step of is the next evolution of urs so taking a cue from urs we will be proceeding towards rars so the whole point has been that uh, uh, of surgery is to develop a uh, new minimal invasive techniques for dealing with a uh, 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 yeah thank you so uh the whole point of uh, surgical practice has been to develop uh, minimally invasive techniques which are beneficial to the patient and uh, a lot can be done through a small uh, incision basically or um, or no incision so this is the whole essence of uh, surgical practice uh, world over and we have like used uh, moved over to endoscopic surgery which is uh, the uh, purely minimally invasive technique it doesn't uh, require any incisions or anything so it's it's in purity a uh, uh, genuine minimal invasive technique when we talk about endoscopic surgery and the uh, development of small caliber flexible instruments has made it possible that endoscopic surgery seen uh, has seen the light of the day uh, especially in urology to treat uh, not just stones but uh, uh, conditions like tumors or uh, any avms or you know, any sols basically so uh, it has served both a diagnostic and a therapeutic uh, role so why this is rising trend why why we aim for minimal invasive methods because getting the obvious it's it's shorter hospital stay lower cost improved costnesses and early return to work so which is the is just something that in today's world we look forward to everyone wants to get back to their uh, routine as early as possible and that is what Uh, uh urs and rirs and other endoscopic uh, uh, techniques strike for so uh, time memorial uh, we have been using eswl which is uh, i would say even more uh, minimally invasive technique than urs but uh, we have achieved not uh, very optimum results with eswl in all the cases so hence the need for urs so uh, just tracing the history it all started with hugh hanlin young when he uh, devised a uh, uh, used a 12 pence cystoscopy and it was used in a patient of uv and he directly entered uh, a ureter thinking that this is a continuation of the bladder and uh, ironically he was meant to do cystoscopy but in effect he was doing a ureteroscopy uh, so uh, with uh, 1964 marshall developed the first flexible ureter uh, rhinoscope and it was further elaborated uh, by fuchs and fuchs and later by goodman and lyon the fuchs and fuchs uh, reported their first uh, series of successful flexible urs and uh, the contemporary rirs technique that we use uh, using flexible scope and laser was used by grasso and shellek in 1998 for the first time so this is a brief uh, overview of how the ureteroscope has evolved so it all started with rigid ureteroscope which we don't use now they use the rod lens system and they were a, they were very big in size their diameter of 12 to 13.5 inch 
and they required uh, dilatation in almost all the cases before we could use them for ureteroscopy. And it gave way to semi-rigid ureteroscopes. So semi-rigid because these ureteroscopes can bend a little bit, uh, not although they appear very stiff, but they have it in them, the, the uh, inherent innate property that the shaft can uh, bend at places just to uh, maneuver all the way uh, in the tortuous ureters. So that's why they are known as semi-rigid ureteroscopes and they use fiber optic illumination. And uh, later flexible URS and uh, the future trend that we can look forward is uh, robotic URS and virtual URS. So now uh, what I've just uh, told you about, these are rigid uh, uh, scopes, the flexible ones and the semi-rigid ones, which is uh, conventionally used for RERS. So how do we proceed? Uh, we uh, review the patient's radiology. So like in all other surgeries, uh, the, uh, the principles remain the same. The first and foremost, I think, for any surgery is the selection of the case. If you got your patient right, then the surgery should uh, go on perfectly fine. Uh, uh, but if, if the selection is not optimal, then you can expect anything uh, extraordinary. But the foremost principle is to select your case well because in uh, endourology, in urology, uh, a same thing can be dealt by three, four methods. So there are hundred ways to skin a cat uh, when it comes to uh, 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 urolithesis. And uh, it all depends on how competent and how comfortable you are using either of the techniques. So choosing the right patient is foremost. And it all depends on stone, its size, location, density, where it is located, how big it is, and how dense it is, uh, whether it is amenable to uh, laser lithotripsy or not, and uh, will, will it require more time, stage procedure, stage settings, all, all those things. So pre-operative preparation, like in any other, we need to rule out UTI, and we need, preferably need to stop anticoagulants, but in presence of a single anti-platelet agent uh, like aspirin, we can still perform uh, RIRS.